Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we have a package. This is the Kai Wheats KOT936 soldering station. Let's get at it. I received this from Kai Wheats for review at no charge to me. So this is uh, a sponsored video. Kai Wheats will not review the video before I publish it. They have no say in the production of the video and any opinions in here are completely my own and none of this is reviewed by Kai Wheats. So we have a user manual. We have a base of some sort, I guess. We have a Brillo pad, which is good because I needed a new one of these. We have bits and bobs. Those look like soldering iron tips. This looks like helping hands. Yes, indeed. All right, good stuff. We have a magnifying glass. We have some lead-free solder, and it's packed really well. And then here is the station inside. So let's see if we can pull this thing out. Here's our iron holder. And here is the base unit and the soldering iron itself. Now I suppose there are directions. So I'm going to put this thing together, hopefully without help of the instructions. Always my goal. And you know I say that and it, it kind of is. When I get a product, unless it's some complicated piece of software or gadget like an HF radio, I'm, I'm not going to read the instructions. I, I like things to be fairly obvious. So this is where we plug the iron in here. You can see the temperature range. This has a dial which gives you the readings here in centigrade and American. I. Uh, I can kind of convert these in my head, kind of. Temperature, I don't do that well, but close enough. Here's our base. This is packaged really nicely. And I'm not going to demo soldering things, but what we are going to do is after I get this hooked up, we are going to see how accurate that temperature gauge is. So this has got a DIN style connector and it's keyed and only goes in one way and fits in there nice and solid. Uh, this particular model, your mileage may vary. This is an American plug. I assume you can possibly get this with uh, European or Japanese style power plugs. Let's take a look at the rest. So I assume that what we would do, yep, that's going to fasten on there like that, and then the helping hands will fasten to that. I have the helping hands, which I, I know you've seen on this channel before, and let's see, these are not magnet, these screw in. Let's take a quick look at the manual, and then this is the hardware for the feet. Uh, once again, this is the Kai Wheats KOT936. I have several Kai Wheats tools here already. I've done reviews on them before. I gotta say, I love me some Kai Wheats. My main meter is a Kai Wheats HT118. Um, I've reviewed some of their other models as well uh, of meters and various doodads. So this shows basically how to lay this thing out and how to screw the little feet on. Yeah, so this doesn't appear to mount to this. It just, yeah. So the way this is gonna work, and I'm gonna skip this part for now, these are gonna fasten on to the base unit. And then once the feet are on this base, then this whole thing just sits on the base like so and these cutouts are for the legs on the station. So if you don't want this in the way, you can just pull the station off of it and you don't have to use it. And again, that's got the helping hands and that's kind of cool because they'll be right here with your soldering station. This is to clean your iron. Um, 
I, everybody has their own routine to clean their soldering iron. I've used a wet sponge forever and a lot of people have said, oh, don't do that, use this stuff. So I use this kind of stuff. So this has the little sponge deal. Here's our soldering iron with a protective cap on it. And this comes with a fine tip on it for doing electronics. To replace any of these, you're gonna unscrew this off of the iron itself. And then it's gonna come off that exterior sleeve. And then the tip actually just slides off the heating element like so. And then we can get our collection of tips. And that just, like I said, slides right over that heating element. And then the collar goes back on. And you can see, if you've ever looked at one of these, there's a little shoulder there that this slides over and then has an indent in it that holds that shoulder down to keep the actual metal iron in good contact. And then when you're using this, of course, it goes in there where it's not touching anything and you're good to go. And I suppose is meant to go down there. So you can just shove your soldering iron in there. I like that. That's actually not a bad idea. So instead of using this kind of gadget, there's my cleaning stuff right there. So every time I jam my soldering iron in there, I can stick it in there and rotate it, or I can come up here and do it that way, either way. But it's one less thing on the bench in the way when you're trying to solder. So that's a great, a great little feature. So let me put the base together and put on the magnifying glass, and then we'll fire this bad boy up and see how accurate the temperature is on it. Okay, we've got the base together. So we have our hands. These are nice. Those feel very sturdy. They're not gonna bend. And then we will put our base like so. Okay, so we've got this thing together. They give you some safety tips in the manual here after showing you how to use it. They require or request or suggest, I guess is the right word, to turn the temperature up to about 200 degrees centigrade for preheating and then adjust to the proper temperature after preheating is completed. They don't say how long, I'd guess a minute or two. I see one problem with the helping hands in the mirror. There are no washers on these screws and as I move these back and forth, this is gonna work that screw out of the base. So, um, you should uh, correct this periodically for temperature. So there is a temperature adjustment on this. You can use a screwdriver in the cal hole on the chassis panel to make fine adjustments yourself. So let's see if we see the calibration hole and there it is right there. So they're saying every so often you need to check your temperature and you can use this to adjust up or down so that the uh, the knob is giving you the heat that you're that you're wanting. This seems like a pretty solid station. See the mirror? That's that's because I've moved it and it's unscrewed that screw. I like this base. Obviously, this can go on either side. And you've got your steel wool right there, or copper wool, and you've got your cleaning sponge. I would um, I would probably drop a dime on a little bigger sponge, but that's me. But all in all, this is a nice looking station. I will uh, put a link to this in the description below. I want to fire this thing up and uh, let's see how accurate the temperature is. Okay, so we've got everything set up. I moved the base unit out of the way. We don't need it for, for this. Okay, so the last thing I want to do here with the soldering iron set is let's see what the temperatures look like on it. It's off, it's cooled down to room temperature. It's 73-ish degrees in the shack today. By the way, it's Christmas when I'm recording this. And it's uh, rained half the day, and now the sun is out, and it's hot and muggy here in Alabama. So Merry Christmas, y'all. And I've got the Kiwitz KOT936 set at the lowest temperature. And we're going to turn this thing on. And that says that it's about 200C. So we're going to see how well this works. Okay, that's heating up pretty good. And so you can see the temperature in centigrade here on top, and then our Fahrenheit temperature here on the bottom. I've got the probe speed taped to the tip so we can actually get a pretty accurate measurement of the temperature. 
Hopefully it won't catch all this on fire. And we're looking for a target of about 200-ish C here, which is about the temperature you 3D print with. Um, so, I mean, that's like a minute or so. And we're at 200. And it looks like it's slowed down a little bit. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty close. She's slowed down. She's at 207. So that's not bad at all. That's great. That's our low temperature, 207, 208. So I'm going to put it up to 300 on the gauge. And let's see what it takes to get there. It's going pretty fast. This is not bad. It's getting hot. And we're almost there. And of course, this gauge is not, you know, not 100%. It's not digital. And again, there's this adjustment calibration down here. So, you know, I would probably fiddle with this a lot. Yeah, not bad. It's slowly creeping up there. Let's go to 350. Boom, and it jumped right up to 350. So it's actually running a little. I might have that a little past 350. No, that's pretty much what that's on. It's a little past it. I'm starting to see a little bit of smolder in here. And we're pushing well past 350. So it's um it's running hot. Let me drop the temperature down. So great. She gets plenty hot. Like I said, I would probably I would probably uh try and verify this myself before I use this on a regular basis. And what I'll do is is set it up just like this and try and dial in the temperature on this knob a, a little closer, um, especially at these higher temperatures. I normally solder around 350. Great test. Obviously, this thing puts out some power and gets plenty hot to do your job. Awesome. Okay, guys, that pretty much wraps up the review of the Kaiwitz KOT936 soldering station. This is a nice little budget station that appears to do everything it's supposed to do. It comes with an assortment of tips, bigger ones, chisel point, pinpoint, smaller chisel tips. I have the uh, I have the medium medium chisel tip kind of thing on there right now. It comes with a little wetting pad, and it comes with uh, the cleaning kit right here, uh, which I've put in this dingus but it's designed to sit in there. And I, the tip tinned just fine. I cleaned it up with, with flux and then tinned it and it tinned great. Didn't have any problem with that. And it comes with that really nice base. So as you can see, it also comes with this base. It has a magnifying glass on a flexible arm and then two helping hands style arms. I had just moved it out of the way for recording this, but this is nice. It just sits on this so you can use this or not use it. And these unscrew. So you can take these arms off and pack this up easily for travel. But that is the review. And we did some testing with the Kiwitz meter. This is the Kiwitz HT-118A. Great meter. This is my everyday driver in the shack. Love it. Works fine. And that is it, guys. 73. I hope you all got something out of this. Make sure and give me a thumbs up. Share it with your friends if you would. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, click the dingus right down below and ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Have a great one.